Right, next up, um, what we'll do next is actually join the pieces together. Um, what I've found is I have actually sanded the parts in their separate pieces before and then joined them. Um, but what I've found is um, it's a lot easier, or well, the join always appears to come out a lot better if you join the parts sooner than later. One of the main problems you have um, is if you're working on a working on this surface and you, you, you're sanding away your ringing or your layer heights, no matter how hard you try not to roll the joining edge with this, this edge here, yeah, so you need to keep that edge really, really crisp. And the crisper you can keep that edge, the better really um, for your join. Now, no matter how hard you try not to. Um, roll that edge as it were, um, I've always found that it, it's definitely better in the long run to join the pieces and then um, <coughs> join the pieces and then um, and then sand and, and carry on with the finishing. One advantage of actually not of uh, perhaps vapor bathing it now is that I can get this in my vapor bath, um, this size. Um, let me just switch my vapor bath over so you can have a look at that. See, um, I've got a couple of things that are useful about for bathing. I've got like a, just a round jar, um, and I've got this little hashed up um, sort of assembly I've made. It's got like nylon, um, 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 like a nylon frame that the glass slots into. Uh, it's just a uh, trial thing with nylon. I needed something to print when I was um, playing with nylon. So I did that, um, and then that fits inside um, onto my build plate inside the printer. Um, and all you need to do it's it's, it's very simple. Um, um, what I normally do is I'll preheat my build plate up to 80 degrees C Celsius. Um, I think acetone normally evaporates at about 58, 60 degrees Celsius, um, but 80 seems to work quite well. Um, in in the printer, so that doesn't necessarily mean that the the, the, the bottom of the plate is getting up to 80 degrees Celsius. It's just what um, I need to set my uh, build plate up uh, temperature to to get the, the vapor to to um, evaporate, the acetone to evaporate. So basically, um, once I've got my build plate up to temperature. <coughs> I would um, dust off my parts. Obviously, you don't want any sanding or um, dust on your parts because that's just going to melt into your finished parts. So I give them a good brush. Uh, sometimes I give them a wash as well. Let them dry thoroughly. Make sure there's no um, sanding debris on there. And then basically, what I do is on the on the side that I'm not really worried about um, with the finish, I'll get some tape. Um, masking tape or painter's tape um, and I'll put a little loop in there like that. Simple as that. So it's a little handle for you. Yeah. And then into the um, into the vapor bath you go. Okay so the things unfortunately I can't show you the vapor bath in action um, because I've got stuff printing at the moment. Um, but this is the things to to um, take in consideration when you do this. Get your jar or whatever in the printer up to temperature so uh, like I say on the, on the replicator too I'm setting it to 80 degrees Celsius um, once it's stabilized just get a cap full literally just a cap full of acetone and gently just spill it into your onto the base yeah and if you wait about I know, 30 seconds a minute you'll see the, va the, the vapor start to condense on the colder outer bits of the glass and it normally rises up about halfway um, one capsule in this size um, container it would normally rise up to about just under halfway um, condensed. So that's the level of your vapor, as it were. Um, you do need to be careful. Um, one thing I've realized, one thing I've found out is um, less is more. So if in doubt, just do it for less because you can always redo it afterwards. 
Um, and I typically do it, I mean the first one I'd normally give a really, really quite long soak in the vapour bath for about perhaps a minute and a half. And all I do is I just hold it, just holding it like that. I'll bring it down, so it's just into, into the cloud, into the vapour cloud. You normally feel it on your fingertips. Um, and then I don't just hold it, I actually move it around. Yes, you want to move it around so it swirls everything around. So I'm moving it around, moving it around. Um, obviously don't touch the bottom because obviously you get a lot of neat acetone onto your part and it, you know, you'll get a different finish on that. You can normally tell on the top, it'll start to go shiny um, and sticky. And you can feel your fingers when it's, when it's starting to go sticky. And then once you're sort of satisfied, have a look at it, take it out um, and put it aside. But just realize that it'll actually carry on um, carry on um, melting the surface even after you've taken it out. So um, sometimes you just go time and so you take it out just before it looks perfect and um, and then it, it works. Um, when I was thinking about putting this video together I asked some of the guys on RC groups exactly the process that happens when you um, when you do vapor bath um, AVS um, with acetone or brush on acetone. Basically the, the sort of best description or my best understanding is basically what, what the vapor does is it relaxes the surface, the plastic um, surface and the molecules and allows the molecules to, to spread. So it sort of relaxes it, um, loosens all the molecules up and they actually allow to spread. So in the sort of valleys, so that the, if you imagine the peaks on your layer heights are like mountains and the valleys are like the troughs on your layer heights. So the peaks sort of melt down and fill the troughs. Um, and then obviously once the acetone is evaporated, it, all those molecules are locked in their new position. So it actually adds quite a lot of strength um, to your part. Um, and I've certainly noticed that, I mean, as this is, I mean, it's, it's pretty light. It's got a light infill in it. Um, and I'm pretty sure if I were to try and snap this, I could snap this in half pretty easily. Um, um, as it is, but once it's been acetoned uh, immediately, um, you, you can feel the strength. It doesn't creak so much when you're moving it. Um, it just feels stronger. Um, but like I say, I can't actually get um, an assembled uh, part of the mold in my size bath at the moment, and I haven't had time to actually um, figure out, find a fish tank, or find something new. Um, to, to do the vapor bathing in it. Um, and also I think people are a bit uh, wary of using the acetone vapor bath, which is fine. Um, I use a different, I use a, a brushed on method, works just as well. Um, it's a lot quicker. Um, and further down the line, I will revisit the, um, using the, the vapor bath with, with these bigger pieces. Um, but at, at the moment, I've got a system of work and a, a, a flow that works fine, works perfectly good. So people who've never, People who want to follow along with this could actually use just a paintbrush like I'll be using um, and not worry about having to um, get a hot plate for a vapor bath um, and all that extra learning they need to do. So the, the method I'll show you is what we're going to do is we'll join the two pieces together, we'll prep the joint, join the two pieces together, um, weld it up um, and then we'll start um, sanding it or we'll seal it first with the, the first um, first layer of um, acetone. Um, once that's going off we'll, we'll sand down through the grades um, until, they finish, until they're finished. So I'll, that, that's the route I'll be taking you. So as far as you guys, um, if you want to try something similar um, with your printed parts, all you really need is a um, soft bristle paintbrush and I'll, I'll, I'll take you through how I'm doing it.